Hello and welcome back to FPV Reviews. My name is Spike and today we're going to be reviewing the ready-made RC Anaconda airplane made specially for FPV. This aircraft has several unique design features and represents the latest, at least at the moment, in airframe design for FPV airplanes. That's due to several features that it has. First of all, the inverted V-tail as has been mentioned in other videos, when a uh, yaw control is, is given, uh, it also produces a little bit of roll um, to help the aircraft in turn. Uh, there's good and bad things to an inverted V-tail. We'll discuss that a little bit later. Um, but that's, that's one of the advanced features. The other, the other thing that it, that it does is let the prop wash be clear, relatively clear of the tail in cruise flight so it increases the efficiency of the aircraft and maintains a more linear uh, control surface response for the rudder vaders. The other thing this aircraft has that's unique are uh, leading edge slats where the leading edge of the ring actually droops down when the flaps are deployed so the intersection of the wing, the, the overall camber for the wing is greatly increased so this gives better short takeoff landing performance especially landing and better stall characteristics when the aircraft is uh, under power in a climb and stalls um, or at any airspeed uh, really when the angle of attack is exceeded it, it helps the characteristics for recovery so the other thing this airplane has that, that a lot of people really are talking about and like is the vo internal volume of the fuselage. That's really important because as we advance in FPV, we're putting bigger batteries in, we're putting more gear, more uh, components like autopilots, sensors, and we kind of need room to space all the things out a bit, maybe not have them right cram next to each other. So having a lot of internal volumes really helpful. We'll have a look at that more in detail later inside the fuselage. The other thing the, that it has up front, as you've probably seen in other videos for this aircraft, is a swappable payload underneath the nose here in the chin of the aircraft. And it's meant actually for a GoPro 3 I'm still using a GoPro 2 at the moment of this video, haven't uh, sprung for the 3 yet, might even skip it and get a 4. Um, they just released the 4, so as soon as the price comes down a little bit, uh, we might get one of those. At any rate, uh, it has a swappable payload there, and there's space underneath for an upside-down gimbal. So that's one of the latest things that people have been doing with this type of aircraft is putting a, a, a gyro stabilized camera gimbal underneath the nose of the aircraft. So it can have an unobstructed view and take excellent aerial video. So that's really good. The, the other good thing I liked about this aircraft besides the two meter wingspan, so you know obviously it can lift quite a bit of weight for its size, it's very modular and it comes apart right here, comes apart back here. The, the tail has a, a couple of fasteners that can split it and the wings both come off and also come apart. They're joined in the center. So the whole aircraft can really be broken down and fit into a very small box or a small car. Uh, you could even fit it back in the box that it came in. So that's an advantage uh, for a lot of people that don't have a large vehicle to and have to transport it somewhere else to go fly. So when we flew this aircraft, we, we've already flown it, so we, we won't be doing the maiden flight uh, in this case. We were impressed by a few things um, with the aircraft. It, it also showed a few characteristics that, that we think could be better. Overall, it was very good. First thing we noticed, there was no trim required uh, when we set the center of gravity properly. We got the aircraft off and we did not have to trim the aircraft. So that says a lot about the design itself. It also flies very true 
it doesn't have self-correcting tendencies per se, but it was an extremely easy aircraft to fly. And seeing some other videos, you know, it's hard to tell in film really sometimes. We here on this show we try to portray it as accurately as possible. But it but really it's hard to tell exactly how the aircraft flies and, and what the relative speed is. I was expecting a faster aircraft that was maybe a little hard to handle was not that at all. The low speed characteristics of the aircraft were really good. It pretty much went right where you pointed it. It it tracked like it was on rails. I was a little worried that there might be a problem with spiral instability or spiral divergence where the aircraft loses track very easily and actually starts to drift into a spiral dive due to issues I'd had with other aircraft with inverted V-tails in the past. But we didn't see that. They've, they've managed to work that out of the design um, due to the shape of the booms, the fairly flat uh, fuselage that's, that's a bit wider up front of the center of mass and a couple little uh, stability skegs that they've added vertically down below the booms, uh, below the rudder vaders. So they've managed to take out really all the bad flying characteristics of the aircraft. I'd also heard some bad things about its stall characteristics. I did not find that to be true. When uh, the first time I tried to stall the aircraft, I, I start gradually. I, I pulled it into uh, level flight uh, with power with no power off and kept pulling the elevator back and back and eventually got the airplane mushing down and still retained roll control and could not get the aircraft to stall. That was at the recommended center of gravity setting uh, by the manufacturer. You can find the manual on the manufacturer's website. So we'll, we're going to put a link to the product um, and their description of the product and which contains the manual as well uh, at the bottom of this video. So the only bad stall characteristic I found was at full power when I stalled it and did not use the slats and flaps. I did end up actually a little past 90 degrees so the aircraft was was just starting to get inverted during the recovery, but it wasn't really that bad for this type of aircraft because the recovery was immediate. Um, it did not try to stall again when I when I was during recovery. It recovered from the stall the first time. So bad stall characteristics? No, not really. Um, I was pretty happy with it. Also, it handles good on the ground. It's got good stance for the landing gear. And I actually once had a very strong crosswind on a fairly narrow airstrip I was flying at. And I actually, it was so strong, I actually should have been landing across the runway, even though it wasn't very wide, which I did later. But first I tried a crosswind landing. I came in a little hot, um, crossed the controls, and put it on the runway and it stuck. I was I was very happy with that. So it can easily be landed in a crosswind. Um, something to keep in mind if, if you're going to be getting this airplane or thinking of getting this airplane, you're going to need a radio with at least three separate mixing functions if you want to have all the functionality of the aircraft. Now the manufacturer talks about flying it with without a computer radio, without any mixing, uh, without even VTAIL mixing, and using both the rudder vaders together and the aileron separate. I did try this and it does work. It's safe, but it does not provide at all a coordinated turn. In fact, there's a pretty big wiggle in the aircraft and in yaw as you bank into almost any turn. And if you have an onboard camera, it's going to look really lousy. It was safe. I didn't find that it upset the aircraft in any unsafe way. Uh, but if you really want the potential out of this aircraft, you have to have those mixes. One mix you're going to need just for the tail, for the V-tail. And some people have 
asked the question about the V-tail. You know, how do you set it up for an inverted V-tail? Well, if you think of a V-tail like this, if you just set it up for a regular V-tail and then just switch the two servo wires, it will work for an inverted V-tail. So there you go. Also, aileron to rudder mix. Once you have, the first thing you want to do obviously is set up the V-tail mixing for the tail. After that, you're going to want to try to cancel out that adverse yaw condition that you get when you apply aileron to initiate a turn. And you want to do that by using, setting up another mix, uh, using the aileron servos or the aileron channel for the master channel in the mix. And then the new channel that you've created for the virtual rudder or rudder vaders where they move independently you want to use that for a slave. And we did find a bit of a problem with the, the aircraft. Uh, we were able to, to use a mix like this and we ended up increasing it and increasing it and increasing it uh, to the maximum, which was 140% mix. So even at 140% of that mix, we, we did notice if it's banked extremely quickly that there's a little bit of adverse yaw happens there, but under normal flying circumstances it won't even be noticed, not even in the video. And we did get it to take very good aerial video. Um, the, the cameras, of course there's no shock absorption mounting in the front. We didn't find that it needed it. Um, there is some vibration being a pusher from the airflow going over the wing into the prop arc there you know you can you can hear it in the air it's it is a little bit of a noisy airplane because of that having the prop so close to the the rear of the wing but that's kind of natural for pushers and it did not affect the video at all we we found perfectly stable video coming out of the aircraft under all circumstances not a problem uh so for the manufacturers i i would suggest a few things for this aircraft um, I'd suggest somehow getting some more rudder authority, whether that means making the rudder vaders, the, the moving parts of them, a little bit bigger, or maybe decreasing the size of the ailerons relative to them. I guess you could de decrease the throw yourself as well. Um, the other thing I might suggest would be an alternate tail configuration. Not everybody's going to like the inverted V-tail. I did get along with it better than I thought, but it would be nice to have the option for other tail configurations. So that's just my two cents for for that. The other thing, the it comes with a foam molded spinner. I know some of the old multiplex aircraft came with one like this. It was pretty useless. Um, you're never going to get it to balance or fit really precisely. So. I'm not using a spinner. This one's absolutely useless. I'm sure it took up space in the molds, so if the molds are ever made again, or if they're going to make changes to the aircraft, if you're the manufacturer, I'd, I'd suggest that instead of that, maybe a fairing to make a smooth nose underneath where the swappable payload up front goes would be nice. Um, so. That's that's what I you know thought about the airplane. Um, also, a couple of little warnings about the aircraft. If you're going to fly it at fairly high speeds, there's a couple things that can that I have had happen to me. One of them, the canopy, it's held down with magnets. On a high speed pass in level flight, and I hadn't even got up to full speed yet, the canopy flew off and departed the aircraft. And I thought, oh no, it's going to be in shreds because it went back into the prop. Somehow it managed to clear the prop completely. Um, I think it did hit the tail, but it didn't damage anything. And so the canopy's fine. But if you're going to fly fairly fast or just don't want the risk, or you're going to be flying long range with the aircraft, it would be a good idea to, s to somehow manually secure the canopy. Now I did not have the camera mounted in the front of the swap where the swappable payload is at that time 
So the air ramming in there probably pressurized the fuselage, the inside of the fuselage, a little more than would be normal. Although there are forward-facing vents. So I'm pretty sure that contributed to the canopy coming off, but still I would suggest securing it better. Um, I did use the magnets that came with it. I had a couple small issues getting the nose wheel uh, set up right. I had to add a couple washers between the arm that pivots it and the block that goes in the fuselage to keep them from rubbing. And I noticed there was not really room for a collet on both sides of the wheel. So the wheel can can go up against the landing gear leg and create excess friction and maybe even lock up there. So what I did was, was take a washer and some solder and solder a washer there to, to provide a smooth place for the, the wheel um, to rub at the center so it didn't rub on the strut. And, and lock up. That wouldn't be a good thing to happen on takeoff. So anyway, those are my thoughts on the aircraft uh, after having flown it a bit. Um, the, the, other, the other thing I experienced, and I'm, I'm still not sure exactly what caused it and what, what uh, there is to do about it, was also in a high speed pass with, with full throttle on, but it's still in level flight. I experienced airframe flutter, which was pretty significant. And I could see the booms, the tail booms, articulating against each other like this um, when it was fluttering. And I'm still not sure exactly why that happened. If the tail has a harmonic, maybe it's due to the prop wash. Really not sure. So it also could be have nothing to do with the tail and simply be the wing twisting and fluttering in flight and pushing the boom up and down as it twists. So it could even be the servos that I've used because they're fairly cheap servos. They're Emax servos. They are digital. They're metal gear. They're the size that the manufacturer of the airframe recommended. They're not, th this was a kit, so those are my own servos that I put in. So it still could be the servos. So. What I'll try to do after the review episode at some point, if, if I have time, is to recreate that again with a couple of high speed, the GoPro is set to high speed recording. Looking at the wing, looking at the tail, mounted here in the center of the aircraft, and see if I can figure out the harmonic and what starts moving first in that flutter situation. But just a, just a word of caution, as far as that goes, if you're going to fly the airplane really fast, it's probably not the airplane for you. Um, this is actually a slow flying airplane. You know, it has really good looks. It looks really fast. It's not that fast, which is good. It's a good thing. Um, I was I was a bit worried it was going to be too fast and or hard to handle. It flies really well, really true, and the Overall, it's a great airplane. The, the few problems that it has or little faults are far outweighed by the good things about the airframe. Um, there's, there's also been a lot of people talk about the stereo jacks. They weren't happy with them. It uses uh, stereo jacks for the carbon fiber booms inside of the, of the, the booms, the foam here. And they, they, they plug in, so when you physically connect them and then clamp them down with a screw, the electrical connection is automatically made. I have had no problems with this once I got it together. I did notice from the factory one of them uh, did, would, would come out. It was glued in with something resembling hot glue. The, the, the holder for the stereo plug into the end of the carbon fiber boom and I pulled it out, I removed all the old glue and glued it in with CA. Haven't had a problem with it since. I love the modularity. And overall, this is a very good aircraft. So next we'll go fly it and hopefully try to get you an even better idea of how it flies, what it can do, what it can't do, and what the video footage looks like. So we hope you enjoy the next part.
we'll see you out at the field.